evolution of sound. Beep beep. What's up ninjas? My name is Semrold and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys the key to making amazing pads. And I don't care if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced. You probably know this already, but you're not doing it that much. And honestly, at the end of this video, I want you guys to go make a pad and just start doing this to everything that you can find that's applicable and pretty much see where it takes you with the pad. Now, the key to making amazing pads, guys, is going to be change over time. This means automation. This means use LFOs and envelopes. LFOs are loopable and they're going to loop as long as you are holding down the note now let's put in a wavetable here that actually changes you can see how it's still going now let's get rid of it now if we use an envelope um, an envelope it's just gonna happen once it's gonna get stuck at the sustain phase and then that's it it doesn't keep changing so that's the biggest thing and my biggest tip for pads is going to be to use the LFO more than the envelope. Now, let's get into it. So pretty much what we're going to do is initialize this patch and let's just make a standard pad but with an amazing story. Now, the way I think about pad creation, guys, is going to be change over time. When you hold down that pad, it's going to be changing, going through its little phase. Think about like a phase of life. The pad's going to have a life where it's 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 kind of like, you know, filtered and then it opens up. So let's do that. Let's do the pad has this life where it filters, opens up, and then comes back down. So how do we do that? We utilize an envelope to change over time. Now, I don't want to use utilize the loopable one because I just want this to happen once and that's it. So that's why I decide to go with an LFO. Now, what I'm going to do here is sustain it at zero because after the change, I want this to go back to a value of zero where it came from. Now here we're going to add a decay. I want it to take maybe four seconds or five seconds for it to come back down. And I want it to take um, two seconds for it to open up. And now we put this in the filter here. Now, let's make the filter be one directional by holding Alt, Shift, and click. That's a little trick there. And we're going to open it up. I still want it to be audible, however, when you first hold down the note. Now what we're going to do is just open it up like so and then it's going to come back down so that's my first step the first part of my story for my um, pad is going to be that now let's pick the paint the color that we're going to use for the pad aka the sound the, the oscillators the wave tables we're going to go with the saw and here what i want is this one plus seven semitones in order to layer this properly and here it's this one's going to go down one and let's activate the sub and just use it as a standard you know oscillator which just sound like <laughs> Now, let's route these into the filter by clicking all these here. This is going to be N for noise, S for sub. You can see the story, and then it's not going to do it anymore. That's what I want. Now, the next thing is going to be to add some resonance. That It's going to kind of give it that little boost where it's a change occurs. It's going to give you that kind of sound, resonating sound. There we go. Now, let's play it in the lower octave. There we go. Now, eight voices here for my sauce. This is going to create this kind of nice sound to it you can already see it's starting to take its shape the next thing is the lfo we can apply it on various different things and this is what i want you guys to do create a pad and just start putting the lfo on any little thing you can think of even if you don't know what it does and see what kind of things you can get out of and when you notice something very interesting take note of that in your head so next time you're creating a pad you're like oh i remember i did this and it was so amazing so now what i'm gonna do here is add a you know an lfo to the cutoff so it's changing over time and i want it to happen very slowly now LFOs work in this way. They utilize a wavetable, and LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. What this means is that, you know, we have oscillators that we can play and we can hear them, but these are so low that we can't feel them and we can't hear them, but they're great to change, you know, parameters for us. So pretty much here we can do a fast one or slow. Let's do it very slow. Now the way the wavetable looks, the way this looks is the way it's going to change over time. So if you see this has a gradual increase and a gradual decrease. It, however, if this was very spike like this, the change would be like boom. And then we would have a slow decrease as you can see. So the way it looks is the way it's going to alter the effect. Keep that in mind. I'm going to go with a sine wave. We go into basic and just click a sign. Now we're going to apply this to this and let's make it, give it that movement. Now I want this to happen over time, but I don't want it to happen that much. I just want to give it a little bit of movement, you know, just to, once it's there. As you can see there. Now, the next thing I want to automate is going to be the detunement with the same LFO. This is going to allow me to kind of give it this detuned sound. But at the same time, remember, detunement is just changing the pitch of something. So it's not the same as the rest. And pretty much it gives that detuned sound. And here we're just going to do it. And you can see it's starting to take its shape. Now, in envelope one, I want to give this the pad characteristics. What this means is envelope one is right to the amp, and we need to make it come out and come, you know, come out of the, the amp and come back in, go back to a value of zero in volume before, you know, you know, before we go anywhere else. So pretty much here, um, a pad's gonna have two characteristics, guys. It's gonna have a large attack and a large release. 
Now in envelope two, let's add it to the, you know, the same release in envelope one to envelope two. And you can see just very simple oscillators, but we're giving this pad a story. Now the next thing that I love with um, pads again is change over time. Now what other effects do we have in our arsenal for effects over time? Well, we're gonna have flanger that happens over time. Anytime you see something with this kind of you know rate knob, that means that there's an LFO on this effect and it's changing how fast the effect is applied. So with the flanger, we can get. Kind of weird effect too. You can't really hear it here. There you go. Now let's hold back on the feedback a bit. And then what we can do is apply the same LFO to the mix. So that way we can just give it a little bit of phaser. There you go. Now we're going to add some reverb. I'm not going to automate this. We're going to have two types of reverbs in um, Serum. We're going to have the plate and the hall. The plate reverb is going to be two-dimensional and the hall is going to be three-dimensional. And all I want you guys to know about these is that the plate is going to make your sound still be at the front, even how, however much you apply, and it's still going to sound strong. Um, the hall, however, since it's three-dimensional, it means, you know, sides and then straight on the depth of it. You know, halls are going to really push your sound back. So if you want a very smooth, very, or, you know, just very smooth um, pad, go with the hall. So as you can see though, we're starting to get this really nice pad with just that change over time to detunement to the filter with that resonance and the reverb is just adding the cherry on top guys. The next thing is add a hyper, maybe just a tiny bit in some dimension. The hyper is just going to be an effect like the hyper saw. It's kind of like this cool rate um, kind of effect that's given to a super saw and you guys have probably used it in the virus TI if you owned one. Now the dimension is just going to do the Haas effect and make it sound wider than it actually is. The last thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of reverb to reduce in the muddy area with a bell type, uh, you know, alteration here, just around 200 Hertz usually does the trick there, just a little bit. There we go. Now, as you guys can see, we use very simple, just simple saw, simple everything, but that change over time is the key thing. You might consider that very complex because after time you do have to keep, you know, knowing, okay, I have it on the detune and I have it on the filter, I have it on the phaser, so you can get a little bit lost with it. But experiment with this stuff. You can even use saw type wavetables, you know, just go in here and pick a wavetable, or you can even go inside and edit it, which I'll make a video in the future about it on little tips and tricks to get really nice stuff out of it. Now, the last thing I think to do would be to add a compressor, maybe a chorus, and this is just a standard stuff and we are pretty much done with this pad sounds so beautiful now if you guys don't want to have this semi tone up because it will make you sound out of key in some places just get rid of it and then just play your own chords and then that's going to be the end of this video that's just a tip to kind of give it a bit more of a layer but now you should have a very nice sounding pad and i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i'll see you guys next time